Allow me now to take this time to welcome uh, Jen Antila, who will be taking us through uh, the introduction to OpenMRS community and how to get started. For those who want to get involved with OpenMRS contribution, uh, implementing, and the other activities, how do you get involved with the community? So I want to welcome Jen, Jennifer Antila, you're most welcome. Jennifer is the head of community, director of community at OpenMRS, most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. I, I feel like today is one of my favorite days. We're touching on a lot of topics that I just love. Um, implementation being one of them, community being another one, and then really getting into starting to get into the technical nitty gritties and, and looking at our data model. Um, but when I think back on yesterday, I realized that we actually already started talking about our community when we started talking about our history, the history of OpenMRS and how we've evolved over the last 20 years. Um, we already started really getting to know the community and getting to know OpenMRS. So um, what we're going to do in this session is keep on talking about community and start really setting the stage so that whenever and however you decide to get engaged with the OpenMRS community and work with us, um, you know where to go, you know what you can do, and you're set up with tools to be successful in engaging with the community. So like we talked about yesterday, um, OpenMRS is not only a global good and a software application, it's also a community. And it's really important to understand um, how the community is and why we have this community. Uh, like we also said, you know, open source software is not necessarily free. Um, and there are costs associated with it. But one of the huge advantages of working with open source software is that there are multiple vendors who are using that software, who are developing it, enhancing it, implementing it. And they actually end up bringing together a wealth of experience. This means that a particular facility or a particular country or organization who are engaging with these vendors are not necessarily getting locked into a single contract. And instead you can take advantage of all of the different knowledge and experience like Beth, you just saw with the implementation toolkit that Beth presented. And the community is really that place where all of these different organizations, all of these people with that experience gather. Um, it's where they discover new talent. It's where they grow their own expertise and really help enhance and maintain our shared um, code together. But what exactly is community? What does it mean to be an open source community of contributors? Well, it means three things. It means that we're all coming together because we care very deeply about a certain problem or interest or passion. Um, it means that we are deliberately fostering a, a space, an environment where we can all come together around that passion and share our experiences, share our failures, share what works um, and improve along the way. It also means that we are building and creating and solving problems together using shared practices, shared tools, and shared conventions. So community is not just a word out there. It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But what we're really talking about when it comes to OpenMRS and, and our community is this space the people who come here, come to OpenMRS who care deeply about improving patient care through electronic medical record systems um, and open source applications and, and making a commitment to doing it together. So in the next 20 minutes, um, we want to help expand your ability to engage effectively with the OpenMRS community. Um, and we want to start un unlocking um, what what is possible to do with the community. So that means helping you understand who exactly is behind OpenMRS. Um, what are the advantages of getting involved, engaging, and contributing to OpenMRS? What are some of the factors that actually make contributions successful? Um, like we saw yesterday, our community has grown. Um, there's a lot happening. How exactly do you get engaged with what you are passionate about when it comes to OpenMRS? Um, and that means 
that we also want you to be able to describe how the OpenMRS community is set up so that you can navigate our different spaces, our squads, our teams, and be, you know, really figure out where you want to contribute and do so effectively. Now, yesterday and again this morning, you heard about making presentations. We have a very practical activity that this session is going to start um, your journey to completing. Um, this is the very first one. We want, over the next few days, we want you to start crafting a plan for engaging and working with the community on a very simple project or solution that you're interested in or would like to prioritize. Um, and then we would like to encourage you to either make a three to five video recording, do a three to five minute presentation on Friday, or even just create a slide deck around this um, that covers some of the questions up on the up on the screen. So, so this would be going from what problem are you trying to solve? What kinds of open MRS projects are you interested in? You know, when I talk about simple, this could be as simple as I want to build a widget that does X. Um, I want to improve the patient registration feature in our open MRS implementation. I want to improve the OpenMRS academies. I just saw this great tool uh, presentation on implementation toolkit. I want to help create an academy around implementation. It can be very simple. Um, so I really recommend thinking about something small and um, some low hanging fruit. And then think about why this project is um, important to you. Why is it a priority? Um, we also want this plan to think about what has already been done by other community members and implementers, what's currently happening, and where is this work happening in the community? Who exactly has the experience or knowledge that you need, and who is working on a similar priority or problem? And then start thinking about action. Um, what steps can you take in the next three weeks to get started on the project? What resources will you use? What might get in your way? How will you address any challenges? Now, I know I'm saying this right now and it seems really big and you're like, I don't have the answers to these questions. That's fine. Um, I'm putting these up here now because as we talk in this session today and in the, in the sessions for the rest of today and tomorrow, you'll have opportunities to start thinking about and writing down these different um, answers to these questions. So if you want to do a, a video, um, or, or create a presentation for Friday, um, I'll share the, a link to this slide so that you have this information available and can start working on it as soon as possible. But let's dive in. Um, let's, let's go a little bit behind the, the curtain and talk about who is OpenMRS and what they do. And I wanted to start out with this because we get a lot of questions about who we mean when we talk about the open MRS community. I get that often. I will say we, I say, I've said we a lot um, already this week. And I often get called on like, who is we? So let's start looking at who, who is behind open MRS. Um, we usually hear about three different groups of people. Um, we hear about the open MRS community. We hear about open MRS implementers or organizations and open MRS users. And it really comes down to what the focus of each of these groups are. So the open MRS community really focuses on building and maintaining our core software. Um, what you usually talk about at, here of, as the core global good product. And this is the product that many OpenMRS implementers and organizations then customize, configure, and deploy at health facilities at the country level. They are the ones who are creating distributions like Kenya EMR or Nigeria MRS and providing that implementation um, guidance and technical assistance and support to health facilities in country. Some of them are also contributing their improvements to the open MRS code back into the community. So implementers, you know, kind of span the global community and what's happening on the ground in country. And then open MRS users are those health workers. Um, it could even be stakeholders in country who are using open MRS data to improve patient care or monitor what's happening 
at a country level around um, patient health. So let's let's start diving in a little bit more um, to who exactly is are these organizations? What are they doing? Um, some of you might have seen this graph depicting our phenomenal growth over the last seven years. Um, this is we started collecting implementation data in 2016. And since we started doing that, you can see here that we've gone from 1,100 facilities using OpenMRS to over 8,000. Now, the OpenMRS community our, ourselves, I don't do the implementation. Um, Moses doesn't do the implementation. But it's all of those organizations. There are over 50 organizations who are doing that customization, that configuration, and deploying OpenMRS at the facilities. And so those organizations that share their implementation data with us, their efforts are reflected here. And they play an instrumental role in helping us achieve our mission of improving patient care. So let's talk about code and actual OpenMRS features and functionality. Um, some of those organizations, not all 50, but some of those organizations are collaborating and working in our community to build that those shared and maintain OpenMRS code assets um, that are used by other implementations worldwide. And so you see here um, a word cloud of all of the different features and um, and actually activities that different organizations have worked on in the community that, and this is just from 2022. Um, we haven't even put together what we've done in 2023. And this is what they have all built together. And the number of, of organizations who are building those things together have actually been growing. So we've gone from like three or four way back in 2004, 2005, 2006, um, to 17, 16, 17, 15 in the last three years. This number fluctuates, of course, because not all organizations are in a position to be highly engaged and contribute to the community every single year. And that's perfectly okay. Um, but what we're seeing is that there are developers from these different organizations, and we even have community volunteers who are scaling out and sustaining OpenMRS by making these code contributions. And you can see here, these are this is this is our list of top 30 devs. Um, those, those developers in our community who have had the most um, code commits accepted and merged into our community code. And they actually come from many of these different organizations who have decided to contribute to OpenMRS. Now this is on the code side. Coding is not the only way to contribute to OpenMRS. Um, there are many who are helping create um, guidance, our developer guide, our implementation guide, the implementation toolkit that you just saw, um, designing, creating designs, mentoring other people in the community, creating and maintaining our website, um, or even, even organizing events like this, our OpenMRS Academy, our annual conference, our virtual meetings, all of this is done in, with volunteers and people from organizations who are contributing this to our community. So these organizations are making really valuable contributions that more implementations are adopting. So when we are talking about adopting OpenMRS, we're talking not just about adopting our software, but we're talking about adopting contributions that other organizations, that other people in our community are making. And even though it may seem like different organizations are competing, they have found a way to use their funding so effectively and collaborate with other groups that it's actually creating a very viable business model for them. Um, it's reducing their risk because they're learning how to not only use OpenMRS technology, but navigate and collaborate within our community so that whatever they do build using our technology or um, guides, documentation, events, to get their contribution adopted by others in the community. So what I want to do now is go behind the scenes and talk about um, some open secrets 
for getting your contribution adopted by the OpenMRS community. Things that the, many of these organizations have already gained experience with, they already know how to do, um, I want to share them with you. So the first open secret, successful contributions result from engaging with the community as much as using OpenMRS's tech. What exactly does this mean? Um, so we see people from multiple organizations working collaboratively with the community, and many of these organizations implement and use OpenMRS on the ground. So their contributions from the ground are coming into the community and they create and maintain our shared OpenMRS technology. Um, so it means that we have to share, they have to use a lot of the same technology so that they can reuse what others have used, but it also means that we have to find a way together to collaborate. Um, and this is where it, it's not just about the technology. Um, these organizations have discovered that it takes finding a shared purpose, figuring out what priorities they share with other organizations. It takes communication a sense of ownership, have, taking responsibility for their contributions. Um, take, we all know it takes resources, but it also takes knowledge and trust. Um, it really does take some time to build relationships and trust with others in the community. And so that, so that when you're sharing decision-making or um, responsibilities that, that you're a part of that decision-making process um, and then and then also figuring out you know not just how to use our tech but how to use our community conventions our norms the tools that we use um, i'm not talking about javascript or java i'm talking about how do you go on our discussion forum talk and get information um, how do you use our wiki how do you use our jira how do you get code accepted into one of our github repos those are there are tools and there are conventions that our community has established that really helps that helps make it easier so i have a quick menti for everybody um, and you can use that same code i want i want to understand i want us to look a little bit at why would people even um, decide to contribute to the community. What what is it? It's it's not it's not just a question of knowing the technology. You have to get to know the community. Why would you even do that? Um, so I'm going to move over to the uh, mentee, and I just want to hear from everybody very quickly. Why contribute to open source? Why contribute to OpenMRS? What's in it for you? Um, so I'm putting the the Menti code in the chat. Um, share share us your thoughts. Why 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 would individuals why would organizations contribute to an open source project like OpenMRS? To give back to the community? Yeah, um, definitely. Like using that code, like we said, that code is free. Um, giving back is a way of paying it forward to others. Build a better world share information, learn from each other, grow your skills. You get better results when you collaborate. Um, you help others and you learn from others. You want to make a positive impact, um, improve your programming skills. The quality improves over time and you're building an ecosystem for wider good, yes. So that you can add your own contributions to the code. Maybe there's something in our OpenMRS product that you're not seeing. You want, you have it. You want to see it. Um, you can only build a large, complex project through collaboration. Excellent point. The future betterment of modules and make one solution for all. Improve the functionalities of the product to help people. To permit OpenMRS to continue and grow, remain relevant to help others build on the years of experience with experts. Maybe you want to become one of those experts. You want, you want to have a, a, become an OpenMRS guru. You want to share your experiences customizing OpenMRS for a long time. Um, create some sort of exchange where you want the community to learn and adapt at the same time, learn from what others have contributed. 
um, contributing and helping other people work on real life projects and and get some guidance and collaboration on that community is an excellent place for that. Like I said, we like to we welcome failure. Um, and so our community became becomes a great place to experiment innovate um, iteratively to have collective knowledge and solving problems to learn what others have tried and what's worked for them what hasn't worked for them better feedback from stakeholders, be a part of a project that strives to make healthcare more accessible and efficient worldwide. These are fantastic. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna go back to our slide deck because they really echo what, uh, what we have heard from other implementers um, on the ground. Let me just find that slide and we'll, I'll share what we've heard from them. Um, so like many of you have said, um, you want to make the most of limited resources. You wanna access a pool of talented designers or developers. You want to better understand the diverse landscapes, learn from each other's experiences. Um, there are also some organizations that want to reduce silo development and duplication of effort, um, or they want to create and access a collection of reusable solutions. Um, they also know that there's a greater likelihood that their solution will be adopted by multiple implementations when they work collaboratively in the community. And then really a great, uh, one of the, one reason why organizations and individuals come to the community is because you can then look, see a great diverse range of perspectives that will then inform different technical approaches, use cases, designs, and solutions, improving the quality, making them more robust. And But at the core of it is really people want to make a positive impact on public health by contributing to OpenMRS. And I think we saw that come out really strongly. Um, and that really actually is, re is reflected in our mission. So, um, this is one of the open secrets, right? That those opportunities to coordinate and collaborate emerge when community members and organizations share a purpose when they and have aligned priorities, when they share a mis our mission together. That is really the first step. Um, but align we all know that aligning priorities can be very challenging and we're a large enough community that it's we've discovered it's unreasonable to expect every single organization and every single member is going to have the same aligned priority at the same time um, and want to work on it in the same way. So this is why yesterday when we talked about having smaller squads and teams, that's why we moved to that, mo that model that can be a little bit more nimble. So I wanna look very quickly at an example. So in 2023, um, just this last year, we noticed that there were four or five organizations that were talking about lab orders. Um, they were either wanting a solution, had experience with lab information systems, and wanted to connect it to OpenMRS, or they were thinking about building a solution, or they were actively working on something, or they said, you know what, we need lab, we need some of this stuff in OpenMRS 3. It's not there yet. And they decided they wanted to to work on it with the community, build something that could be reused by other implementations. So there were kind of four questions that they started thinking through. Is my is the solution to this problem around lab, lab orders, lab tests, is it very specific to my implementation or is this something that other implementations can use if we design and develop it right? Um, is there already a solution I can reuse or maybe improve if it doesn't completely meet my needs? Who else is working on this solution? And then how can I work with others on this solution? So like I said, there were already four or five organizations who wanted to work on that. It was enough to, to kind of bring people from those organizations together and put this put OpenMRS3 lab orders on our shared community product roadmap. And they started working together um, and that actually led to greater interest by more groups on the ground who are working on the same thing or had that same priority over time. And so now today we have a, what we call an O3 lab 
and tests squad. And they are actively working on O3 labs and tests and doing it collaboratively. So as we can see, the thing that started this all off were people communicating, people sharing their priorities, and then discovering that they had a shared priority. And I really think that this slide is, is important. Figuring out what your priority is, what you're passionate about at a more micro level is really important because if you don't know where you're going with the community, if you don't know what you want to focus on, um, it's especially in a community as large as our own, it's going to be very um, difficult to find the right place, find the right repo, find the right people to work with. So let's go back to Mentimeter. You can use the same code. And what I want to hear from you now is what problem do you want to solve? You know, what are your projects or your country's priorities? Um, what activities, what kinds of activities are you passionate about? And remember, this does not necessarily have to be about our tech. Um, it doesn't have to be about code. It can be about um, events. It can be about our website. It can be about designing. It can be about non-technical things as well, documentation. There's so many different things that you can be passionate about or so many different problems you might have that we could solve together. So go to Menti. Um, you can, like I said, you can use that same code and just share um, what are your pro what problem do you want to solve? And remember, this is part of that practical activity. Uh, making EMRs accessible by anyone. So what does accessible mean? What what exactly are you you know, dig a little bit more into that. What do you mean by accessible? What are some other problems you want to solve or what are some priorities? What's, if you're with an organization or, you know, you're working with implementations, what's on the roadmap? Enhancing data collection and storage of HIV patient data. Uh, have students practice on training instances of OpenMRS, have a way to work with CAGs in, op in OpenMRS, better medical care, clear and complete documentation for implementers, developers, and contributors, Advance, uh, advancement of IT solution that will allow and make ease of use for patient and doctors, train graduate students, use already collected data to make an effective tool for remote consultation, patient management and tracking, connecting OpenMRS to biomedical tools like x-rays, potograms, reduce time that patients spend at health facilities, make sure that patients have access and control over their own medical records, um, address training and adoption challenges, enhance data quality for decision-making. So some of these, um, smart guidelines integration. Some of these can start giving you a, an idea of what you might want to look for in the community. So if you're interested in enhancing data quality, you might want to look in our community for who else is interested in that problem. Um, where does that start? Maybe you want to look at what the community is doing with regard to quality assurance. Um, this is fantastic. So this actually kind of sets us up for the next and final open secret that I am going to share with you, right? Because now that you know a little bit about what problems you want to solve, like I said, this can start helping you figure out, well, who else is working on this in the community? What's happening? Um, and where do, we, where do I go from here now that I know what I want to focus on? So the next open secret really is take some time and get to know the community's history, values, and dynamics. Really get to know how we work um, and why is this important? Well, many people have said that OpenMRS feels a little like a home, like a family. And so you can almost think about it as what happens when you move into a new neighborhood, um, right? When you move into a new neighborhood and maybe there's a, 
a, a neighborhood event or a neighborhood party, something happening in the community. It's a lot easier and enjoyable for everybody if you've got spent some time getting to know each other first. Um, and then before you kind of maybe do something for the community or bring something to the community to really wow them um, with, with your contribution, right? So it's the same thing with OpenMRS. If you, if you take a little bit of time to get to know the community, how we're set up, get to know different people in the community, um, it's, and you can even start making really small contributions, comments, questions, let people get to know you, then it's gonna be a lot easier for your big idea or your big contribution to be accepted um, later on. So part of what this means in an open source community specifically is understanding our, let's start with our, our values because yesterday we started with our history. So what exactly, how, you know, what, what is behind how we engage with each other in the community? This kind of takes um, some, takes the application of some, some values and principles. So this means making open exchanges, right? Sharing your ideas early and often, um, collaborating, reusing existing things, um, right? So, so maybe a maybe you see something that somebody, somebody has contributed to the community, you want to improve it. Maybe somebody's already started working on a patient portal that um, will give patients access to their health record and you want to improve it. Well, start making a small contribution to that, show that it's valuable and, and people will get to know you and appreciate you. It will help grow your, grow your reputation. Um, and if you do this openly in the community, everybody's getting to know you. I know that's hard. Um, it was something that it took a while for me to um, get used to posting openly on talk and public forums, um, but really it's, it's an amazing experience. Um, you get to learn so much from other people and it really is like, our community really is like a, a, a family. So we're very friendly. We, we welcome everybody. Um, and and that's kind of about what we mean about being about being transparent. And this is all kind of what we talk about as the open source way. Um, and this is actually what many huge open source projects like Linux they all they all kind of start with some of these principles and values. And OpenMRS is the same. Um, that's great, but we're so big. How do you know? Who's doing what? You've heard you hear about squads, teams. How how exactly you know how exactly are we set up? Um, you might be able to, to you might know what you want to engage in. You might be ready to engage openly and and transparently. You might want to reuse things, but how are we actually organized? So, very very broadly, um, this is what our community looks like. Um, we have spaces where people come together to work on a very specific solution to a shared problem. Um, and that happens in squads. It might happen among a few different um, individual contributors, for instance, improving our back end. Um, it might happen in teams. And like I said, these groups are all kind of working at their own pace on their own priorities. Um, and we have some groups that cut across our squads and teams and individual contributors. And these groups, the Technical Arch Architecture Committee and our OpenMRS3 Roadmap Cooperative, they really kind of keep the pulse of what's happening across all of those different squads and teams and individual contributions and help kind of make sure that even as we give the autonomy to those groups to move forward as they want, that we're actually all still moving in the same direction and using enough of the shared approaches to enable quality code, to enable a quality product and make sure that other implementations can use what we're creating. And then the OpenMRS community also has um, a legal entity, a legal business, OpenMRS Inc., with a board of directors and an executive team that represents the community's legal and fiscal interests. Um, and, 
and this is the group this is the entity that allows us to have that global support team that we shared um, yes, a little bit about yesterday that really helps coordinate all of these efforts, um, helps make it easier to contribute and supports the community at large. Um, so if you if you're looking at, you know, you might remember this from yesterday, we, we have these these squads and we have these bigger teams that are providing that alignment. They're all working uh, around our shared product. Um, and what we're really seeing is, is that demand for new OpenMRS3 features are growing. And so we're seeing more and more feature squads like that OpenMRS3 labs and orders. Um, we're also seeing an OpenMRS3 dispensing squad or React form engine squad or billing squad. These squads are rapidly coming up because more and more groups are finding that they have a shared priority and problem and they want to work with with somebody and then this of course is the group that um, is primarily funded by OpenMRS Inc with a few um, special additions so we have Ian Bakker and Vineet Sharma who both actually work for different organizations um, and and are staffed by different organizations who are part of our global health global support team um, and like I said yesterday, these people are come from all over the world. So we're not just based in one single country. We have support where you are. Um, so I want to wrap things up here. We do have another session tomorrow, um, and we're going to dive even deeper into these questions and tips um, around how to actually engage with the community once you know what your problem is. We'll start digging into where do you find information? How do you discover who's working on what? How, you know, get more into those ideas. This is not, this is not the, the ending. This is just the beginning. Thank you.